So we just did the lower extremity and muscle energy techniques, and now I'm going to demonstrate the upper extremity. So um, I'm going to first start with the upper trapezius. So the first thing that I'm going to do is bring the patient into lateral cervical flexion. So just bringing him out to the side. And then I'm also going to slightly rotate him away just because um, remember that the upper trap facilitates opposite side rotation. I'm going to cross my arms. So my left arm is going to push down on the shoulder to prevent shoulder elevation. And I'm also going to resist um, lateral flexion. So I'm gonna instruct the patient to turn his head and bring his ear towards the shoulder. Good, so remember with the um, post isometric con uh, relaxation, uh, with that technique, we wanna take off a couple degrees before activating. Good, go ahead and relax. Hold for 10 and then push for a deeper stretch. You can also have the patient reach down the side of the table that they're stretching. So reach your fingers down towards your body, good. So that would be for the upper trapezius. Next for the scalenes, I'm going to um, rotate him all the way. So remember the scalenes are just posterior to the sternocleidomastoid. I'm going to have him put his left hand across his chest as a stabilizing point for myself. And I'm going to, again, cross my arms. So I'm going to stabilize with my left hand, and then I'm going to prevent rotation with my right arm. So again, I'm going to ask the patient to, um, hold on one second. He's going to relax completely, so I'm passively stretching him, taking off a couple degrees, and then I want the patient to tuck his chin towards his chest, and then rotate towards the uh, right side of his body. So make sure that they are tucking their chin up as they're rotating. You wanna do this in three different positions because there are the anterior, middle, and posterior fibers. With the more rotation, the more posterior you get. So you can start with slightly rotated, so maybe about neutral, about 25 degrees off from neutral, and then about 40 to 60 degrees of rotation if they can tolerate that. Next, we have the um, sternocleidomastoid, so that's just anterior to the scalenes. Same position, the um, patient is going to cross his hand over his chest as a stabilizing position for the clinician. Um, I can provide resistance or I can allow gravity to do so. So first I'll show with just gravity and then I'll show with myself um, providing resistance. So I'm going to have him rotate all the way over to the side. Go ahead and relax. You could also have him um, off the table, so come scoot towards me. Good. So I can have him slightly off the edge of the table, or I could put a bolster underneath his neck. Either way works. So remember, the sternocleidomastoid facilitates neck flexion, so scoot all the way up. There you go. Go ahead and relax. So by putting him in cervical extension and rotation, I'm stretching the sternocleidomastoid. I'm going to ask him to just flex his neck up towards the sky. Go ahead and flex slightly, good. Again, about 20 to 25% of the submax force. You can provide some resistance, but typically gravity is enough. And then relax. And then you're just stretching further into extension. If I wanted to um, provide resistance, I would ask him, so if, go ahead and relax. If this is his maximal passive stretch, I'm gonna take him off a couple degrees, ask him to contract upwards, so go ahead and flex up. I can stabilize um, by putting my hand on his and then just gently providing a downward resistance. But like I said before, typically gravity is just is enough. Go ahead and scoot down. Next we have the um, pectoralis fibers. So remember we have the sternal fibers and the clavicular fibers. If I bring him into 90 degrees of shoulder abduction and his arm is still um, above the table, then that would be positive, meaning that the pecs are really tight. It looks like his look okay for the um, sternal fibers. If I bring him further into shoulder abduction, again, we just want to make sure that the arm is dropping below the table, which would indicate um, if they're falling, if his arm is falling below the table, that there is already a decent stretch in the clavicular fibers, but if it's up, kind of like how cool is now, then those fibers are going to be a little bit tight. Again, I'm going to have the patient cross their arm. 
Good. So first starting with the sternal fibers, if this is his passive stretch, I'm going to take him up a couple degrees and then ask him to horizontally adduct or go across his body. Go ahead and push up. Holding for 10 seconds. 8, 9, 10. Good, relax. And then putting him into that further passive stretch. If I wanted to look at the clavicular fibers, I'm just going to bring him further into shoulder abduction. If this is his uh, most passive stretch, I'm going to take him off a couple degrees and then ask him to push up. So one of the cues that you can use with this is ask the patient to reach into their pocket on the other side of their body. Again, holding for 10 seconds, good, relax. And then stretching passively for another couple seconds. You can do this three to five times. Good. For the latissimus dorsi, the patient is going to be sidelined, so go ahead on your side. We want the hips square with their shoulders, so I'm going to ask Cole to um, activate his core, squeeze his belly button. I'm going to bring his arm over his head, stabilizing his hips, and then pushing him to a stretch for his lats. So this is his passive stretch. I'm going to take him off a couple degrees. I want him to think about bringing his elbow down into um, shoulder adduction while also bringing his arm above from overhead. So go ahead and push up into me. Good, and relax. And then ending with a passive stretch. All right. Next we have the rotator cuff. So I'm gonna have you supine, so he's going to lay on his back. The first one is the infraspinatus. So remember the infraspinatus is an um, external rotator of the um, rotator cuff, meaning I'm going to put him into shoulder internal rotation to stretch the external rotators. You can see here it's relatively tight. You can stabilize the humeral head. I'm just using my hip to stabilize his elbow. I'm going to take him off a couple degrees and ask him to push his hand into the back of my hand. Holding for 10 seconds. And then relax. And then pushing him further into internal rotation. For the um, supraspinatus, he's going to be short seated. So can you swing your legs over and sit upright? Remember the supraspinatus is a shoulder abductor. So I'm going to have you bring your arm across your body. Good, and just relax. I'm going to push him further into shoulder adduction. This is stretching the supraspinatus. Take him off a couple degrees and he's going to bring his elbow up towards the sky. Holding for 10 seconds and then relax. And then again, I'm just pushing him further into shoulder adduction. Lastly, we have the subscapularis. So remember that is a humeral um, internal rotator in the rotator cuff. So he's going to lay back on his back. So if it's an internal rotator to stretch it, I'm going to put him into um, shoulder external rotation. I'm going to stabilize humeral head. I'm stabilizing his elbow using my hip and then pushing him into external rotation. If this is his maximum, I'm going to take him up a couple degrees, ask him to bring his hand downwards like a throwing motion. Good, relax. And then just bring him slightly further into that passive stretch in external rotation.